Sometimes we think of any opening in the wall as a window. A jali is not a window. A grill is not a window. Even a fixed glass in a wall is not a window. As I told you in the last episode, a window is an adjustable device. Something that can be adjusted to your changing requirements. Before the use of glass, a window is opened to connect to the outside world. When opened, it let both light and the outside air to come in. And when the window was shut, it was done so as to cut off the outside world and to keep the light, the air, the sound and everything else out of the room. But the use of glass in windows has changed the game. It has made windows more flexible. One can keep the window shut to cut off the noise and outside air and yet let in light and have a view of the outside world. So, the reason for opening the window is to get some fresh air in, to cool the room, or get the stale and stuffy air out, or both. In many ways, it works as a rudimentary thermostat or the primary device to control the temperature in a room or in the house. So, did you ever think of a window like that? How effectively you can use the window to keep the heat or the cold out? How you can let in the breeze but keep the sun out? How you can let in a bit of gentle daylight but keep the wind out? Now in order to do all of that, obviously a window has to be a very well executed design. But much of this is common sense. Let's first look at a very basic design. The most common window that we see in India is the traditional side-hung casement window. The window will open either to the left or to the right. If you want to take advantage of the prevailing breeze and the breeze happens to be blowing at an oblique angle, not blowing straight on, then obviously it matters which direction the window opens. Will it catch the breeze and direct it into the room or will it on the contrary block the breeze? If the breeze is blowing from the right, the window should open to the left in order to catch the breeze and vice versa. This is just common sense. But let me show you a better option. How about a window in which two shutters meet in the middle? You can open either or both of them to catch the breeze from all directions. No wonder this is what we see built in most of our homes today. The next thing is that you don't want the window to blow about with the breeze. And depending on the breeze or the temperature of the air, you often want to open the window partially. Now, there are window stays that enable you to do that. I always recommend the telescopic window stay. You can adjust the opening of the window to your best advantage. What can you do if you have a single shutter window, which will open only in one direction? Well, the solution is to use a friction hinge. These are now widely available for different sizes and weights of windows. They are more expensive and need careful installation, but they do have their advantages. You can open the window to whatever extent you want and the hinge will hold it in position by its own friction. The window will not blow about in the wind. A separate window stay is then not required. But more importantly, when the window opens, it leaves a gap between the window shutter and the hinge side window frame. Now, you have a much better chance of catching the breeze from all directions. On the upper stories of tall buildings, say from the 10th floor upwards, there is often a problem of the breeze being very strong. In such situations, a top hung window with a strong friction hinge works very well. A little opening provides the gentle breeze you want. What about the PVC or aluminium sliding window? I'm somewhat skeptical about this type of window. Its advantage is that you can adjust the opening to any size, but you cannot open more than half the window width in a two track window and you can't direct the breeze into your room in the way you can do with a side-hung casement window. How many of us remember the ventilator? A device that was widely used before air conditioners came in. It used to be installed at the top of the wall to let in a bit of light and to allow the hot air to escape. In warm and humid climates, it would be in the form of an open grill or a louver under shade so that the harsh light could be kept out, but the air would be allowed to flow through. 
In climates that are very hot or very cold, the ventilator would be a panel that could be closed or opened according to the season. Now, this brings me to my next point, how to cross-ventilate your home, especially in the warm, humid season. Cross-ventilation is a very effective way of becoming comfortable during the humid season. And it's a very good way of cooling the house down with the cool breeze of the evening and the night when the heat of the day has heated up the walls and the roof of the house. Now for this to happen, the breeze must come in from one side and escape from the opposite side. And if you didn't do this, the heat gathered during the day would remain trapped to the night and you'd be very uncomfortable. Now the old practitioners of Vastu knew how to do this well. But today it seems to be forgotten. And foolishly some people even think that this is unfashionable. If cooler air can enter from one side of the house, move through one room and into the next room, and exit on the opposite side of the house, you will get the benefit of cross-ventilation, even if your doors are closed. Talking of old wisdom, look at this ideal window design which is good for all seasons and all times of the day. Notice the lower part of the window that can be opened separately to enjoy the breeze at the level of the bed or if you are sitting at the floor playing a board game like Monopoly or Scrabbles. The worst culprits are designers of apartment buildings who completely block the entrance passage side of the flat and do not provide any ventilation to the entrance passage, trying to make it like a five-star hotel. This is gross, vastu ignorance. Now I've shown you the simplest ways of optimizing the breeze coming in through your window. In the next episode, we'll be looking at the use of the air conditioner to use it most efficiently. Stay comfortable and stay sustainable.